So, um, Mustafa Çağrıgürbüz, my name, uh, from Turkey. I did my degree in industrial engineering and then did my masters right after. And then I decided to uh, continue with my um, academic career. Uh, so then I went to, to the States to do my PhD at the University of Washington. Since 2006 September, I've been at uh, ZSE as a professor, teaching courses on quantitative methods, um, inventory management, project management, uh, transportation management, so different courses to different groups. So revenue management is um, given the capacities you have in your system, it could be the production capacity, transportation capacity, whatever it may be, uh, trying to maximize your revenues by coming up with uh, some uh, innovative solutions, basically keeping the costs under control around the same level, but increasing the revenues somehow. Uh, so it's mostly about um, selling the right product to the right customer at the right time, time through the right channel, at the right price. It's it's interdisciplinary uh, topic, so you have to know a lot about statistics, forecasting, uh, mathematical modeling, simulation, uh, to be able to do research and um, also do applied work in revenue management. The definitions are a little bit vague, at least for me personally. Supply chain management covers a lot of topics, revenue management as well, and there's a lot of overlap between the two. Uh, my research has been in supply chain management, but uh, since I started doing projects in the revenue management field and some research, I realized that I have been using actually some of those tools in my own research. So um, it's always good to learn new tricks maybe uh, to, um, to model the, the, the problems that you have. Uh, so if the, if the supply chain managers learn about revenue management, they will be able to focus on the revenues a bit more rather than the cost. Usually supply chain management focuses on the costs and minimizing the cost to increase your profit. Revenue management, on the other hand, assumes that the costs are pretty much given. You cannot change them that much, but focus on the revenue. So it's a, it's a mirror image of supply chain management in one sense, but they usually, usually go for the same ultimate goal. The very famous ones, as I mentioned, it sort of started with American Airlines. Uh, they increased their revenues significantly at the time, and they're still doing well. In the hotel business, Marriott or car rental companies like National, um, they're famous. There are a lot of cases written about those companies. But to give an example from supply chain management also, uh, I can give you an example of Dell, uh, where they um, segmented their supply chain. Um, previously they had only one customer type, which was the online customer who would know what kind of computer to buy. They would go to the website, they would select the screen size, the memory, uh, whatever, everything, right? So these customers knew uh, they were te tech savvy and then uh, they knew how much price they wanted to pay, blah, blah. But then later on they started to expand and have different kinds of customers. Uh, in addition to these online customers, they had some retail customers who had a um, different behavior, totally. They had big customers where these customers would buy uh, hundreds of computers or service from that, so the size of the business is also different. Uh, so once they had these different types, they thought, okay, this one size fits all so solution is not working anymore. We don't have one type of customer, we have different types, but our supply chain is designed for this online customer type, which is not a fit for the others. So what they did was, again, given their capacities, um, they came up with different supply chain, de chain designs for different customers. So um, they ended up with four different types, segments, and for these four different types, they had four different supply chain strategies. Uh, again, one is the make to stock, make to order decision for, for each customer type, for instance. The promised lead time, what is the delivery time uh, to the customer, what is the price going to be. So they, they have a nice matrix now where the uh, customer needs and the uh, supply chain capabilities are better aligned. 
This way they were able to uh, avoid either under servicing or over servicing customers because previously it was one customer and one solution and then the customer types increased. This one solution started to underserve certain segments and overserve certain others. So with this better alignment, the supply and demand is much better. Um, the balance is uh, much better now. And they improved um, their revenues, they cut their costs down, increased the revenues, customers are, are happier in general. Um, so it was, it was a success in the end. was very pleasant, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, they, with the students it was nice, I mean, I hope they appreciate it and then they enjoy it as well. I did enjoy. Uh, the, the, the personnel, the faculty is, is very nice. I mean, uh, Kuala Lumpur is a nice city. I think it's a very nice setup and uh, I would, it's, it has good faculty members, very mm, high quality. For prospective students, I would encourage, if they're interested in the supply chain management field, this is one of the best places to, to get the education and the degree. It's not just about the degree, it's uh, also about what you learn and the people you meet um, and this is the perfect environment to do so.